Guys, welcome to the Cashflow Talk. I, it's a pleasure for me to be here sitting with my good friend, Kevin Thatcher. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks awesome. for having me. Awesome, Appreciate man. It. Awesome. Thanks for your time. I know you're a busy guy. You're doing closings all day long. I know you're a busy guy, so thank you for the time that you're spending with me today. I love it. Awesome. Any time to talk with clients is a great time for me. Awesome, yeah. awesome. So first of all, tell us a little bit about you in a minute. What, who, do you, who do you are? What's Independence Title? Tell me a little bit about you. Absolutely. So Independence Title were 15 years, believe it or not. This past July was 15 years. Uh, I moved down from New York. I was a firefighter up there. I moved down mm -hmm. just before September 11th, 20 days before September 11th. I moved down. I started, I was a mortgage broker for a little bit. I, I got into real estate a little bit, got my real estate license. And then I, I just didn't enjoy the way the other vendors were handling my clients okay. because I, I was always like a concierge service for my clients. So years, years later, I said, you know what? Let me get into the title business as well. And eventually I did the mortgage, I did the real estate, I did the title, and if anything went wrong, they called me because they were calling me anyway. Uh, so now you fast forward 15 years later, obviously we wanted to build a, a business and a future. So we got rid of all those other uh, profit streams for us and we started focusing on title and we set our goals and and we're doing a, about a hundred closings a month so it's, it's been a great ride for 15 years I love it the ups the downs and everything in between that's awesome tell me a little bit about those ups and downs in the business I you mentioned you're a firefighter obviously I know your story and here you are in title putting out fires but in real business and re real real estate transactions, right? Yeah, absolutely. So so the reason we're in the referee jerseys now is because we find ourselves that, that we're an independent third party of the transaction. So, you know, a lot of these title companies you go to are representing one party or the other because they have that relationship. And, and I find myself that we need to get back to basics. We need to focus on being the independent third party. Whether we're doing 100 closings or 10 closings, we need to be an unbiased third party to the transaction. So I'm not representing either side, and we're making sure that we're refereeing this transaction to make sure all parties get to the finish line. That's awesome, that's awesome. Uh, what's your perspective on the South Florida market right now? I, and uh, I'm an investor myself, many of you know my story, and. Uh, when I'm doing deals, when I'm doing transactions, everything goes back to basics like you were saying, but what's your perspective on the, on the market right now? How do you see it coming in the next year, two, well, five years? You're not the first person to ask that question. It's funny. You, no matter where you go, because we're always in logo shirts, everyone asks that question. Uh -huh. Hey, how's the market? And you know, I always tell myself that, that we're blessed because we have clients like you that are investors that, that use us. We have clients that are wholesaling, clients that are buying, fixing, and flipping. We have real estate agents, lenders. So they all seem to be busy at a different point in the market. So, so we are a good, uh, we have a good pulse on the market to see where things are going. And, and I think that the inventory is, is getting less. So there's yes. a lot less inventory. Sellers are getting, not as high as they were getting. So the prices are coming down a little bit. I don't think we're gonna have as big of a crash as we had back in 2007, eight, nine, uh, but I do think we're having a market correction. I predicted about five years ago that this would be the year. We were gonna have one good year of the election, I thought, regardless of who won or lost, it didn't really matter. We were gonna have one year of it being stable. And then once we're into the second year, we were gonna start seeing that turn. So we can see just in our statistical data of, of clients that we, we're bringing in more clients, but the clients that were doing multiple deals a month are no longer doing multiple deals. They're doing one or two deals as opposed to five or six deals. So yeah. uh, it, it's an interesting market right now. And, and I only see it getting better. As long as you, you market properly and you build the right relationships, the business is gonna be there. It doesn't matter uh, if the market goes down or not, we're set up for that. So if the market goes down, we can scale back a little bit and still continue to move forward. That's awesome, and that's the reason why I like to ask that specific question to Kevin, and I ask these to everybody, but the reason why I wanted his input on these specifically is because he sees every single part of the transactions. He's dealing with investors, retail buyers, commercial properties, like he sees the entire market where me, I'm only dealing with investors and, and cash transactions, so that's awesome. Thank you, man. Uh, one, I, I'm sure you know Grant Cardone, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm a big follower of Grant Cardone, but I don't agree with something that he says, and I wanted to get your opinion on that. He says all the time, don't buy where you live. I think the opposite. I think I have a, I'm a new dad, I'm, I have a beautiful one-year-old baby, and I feel that provides a lot of security for the person, for the family, a lot of stability. 
Cranker don't think differently. What's your opinion on that? Well, I mean, first of all, he's fantastic. Uh, he, he really is. I mean, anyone, if you run any type of social media, you know who he is because Absolutely. he's he's investing a lot in, in marketing to get in front of you. And, and I think it's a twofold. First, you always have to pull back and say, are you talking business or are you talking personal? If you're talking personal, you're going to want to buy. I would never say rent the house you're going to live in. You always want to buy the house you live in. And I'm a big fan of not having any debt on the house you live Absolutely. in. So don't mortgage it. So this way, when the market does take a turn, you're financially secure in your house that you're going to raise your family. So that's one side. Then the second side, a lot of people, they don't like investing in the uh, areas in which they live. And, and I think it's twofold. I mean, for me, I like to have my pulse on everything. So people tell me, oh, why don't you open an office in North Florida? Why don't you open an office in another state? I said, because then I lose control. Yeah. I want control of my office. I want control of my business because at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, it's my problem to deal with. So I think from the perspective of, of being a real estate investor, when I own multiple rental property, I wanted to be able to go there, see it, collect the rents, talk to the tenants, make sure things are going good. But then you, on the flip side, when you're talking someone very successful, such as Grant Cardone, he's looking more at scaling your business. So having thousands of rental properties and having someone else do that work for you is why he's saying, I think you need to step back in order to grow. So as an example, you look at Donald Trump, whether you like him or not as a president, you look at him mm -hmm. from an investment standpoint. And if you followed him over the past uh, you know, decade, you're going to see that, that from a real estate perspective, it's not like he's buying where he lives all the time. Yeah. He's buying all over the world because that's how you're gonna make true wealth. So yeah. I think that's the perspective that Grant's talking about. Uh, so it depends on the scale of your business. If it's a small business, five, 10 rentals, great, handle it. But if you're looking to truly scale the business, so for me, if I wanted to open a national title company, yeah, mm -hmm. I'd have to scale it, step back, and have people in place to manage it but I'm not there. That's not what I'm looking to do at yeah. this point in my life. Yeah, but you answered the question at the beginning. My, my question was personally, like, uh, I, and you mentioned it's the security, it's having your own home, yeah. it's living in there. So that's Absolutely. Awesome. That's awesome. Listen, I like to own the house I live in. I uh -huh. like to know that it's mine. Yeah. I don't have to worry. The owner's going to go into foreclosure. The owner's going to die. It's my house. I live in it, and I can raise my family. Yeah, and you can renovate it. You can do whatever you want. You can take walls down or obviously with take your permits and change the windows, do whatever you want, yeah. and you can invest in your own home, make it more comfortable, more comfortable for you and your family. Absolutely. Kevin, you, one of the things I love about you and everything you do, you have so much passion and energy in everything you do. What's your biggest passion in life? You can mention something about family or business, but what's your real, real passion in the core of your heart? Well, I mean, obviously we have a twofold. One, you're always going to look at business. You know, my wife always says, you know, and she's a great supporter of the business. We've co-authored a book together. Mm -hmm. and, and whenever we go home, 95% of our talk is always about business. Yeah. So, you know, I think family is the number one thing that I think drives people. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a supportive family, the business is going to fail. So, you know, when you go home and you're a business owner, business doesn't stop. Yeah. The phone doesn't stop ringing, the clients don't stop asking questions. So, you know, one of the things that I think drives me is the family. I mean, you know, my daughter's 14 and uh, we just had Jackson, our son, who's now, uh, he's turning seven months old. So, uh, you know, that's one of the things that I enjoy. I enjoy the family, I enjoy traveling, I enjoy uh, spending time with them, but I also enjoy the conversations that I can have with my wife about business as much as it annoys her sometimes because you know it's like can we just turn off for a little bit yeah. it's hard for me to turn off uh, so so you know that's a really great drive for me and I think the flip side from a business perspective as you mentioned earlier and I said you know I was a firefighter so I learned years ago one time I was saved in a fire that someone was able to save me from a second story of a house wow. uh, it flashed over and, and this guy was able to unhook my boot and get me down the steps I was stuck up there and it started flashing over super super hot and I always said well he saved my life, right? Because who knows what could have happened. Yeah. And that's one of the things is my passion here is to make sure that we're going in the deal together and we're leaving because firefighters, police officers, they do one thing really well. They leave nobody behind. They're running in when everyone else is running out. Yeah. And, and I like to do that. And that's one of my passions with this business. It's not writing title. It's not doing a closing. It's knowing that we're getting into a deal together and we're getting out of a deal and you're getting paid, I'm getting paid, and everyone else involved is getting paid. So that's it's right. about 
just helping more people, I, I think, is uh, great. Helping more people, giving back to charity, and just making sure, like, my staff. I love my staff. I, we have a staff of uh, 15 people, and I love to make sure that I know that they go home every day with a paycheck for their family, and, and you know, it's helping so many people. The more people you can help, the more passionate you get, and you just continue to grow. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, it hasn't been easy to be in business. I understand uh, the, all the ups and downs of business. What has been your biggest obstacle in business? That's an interesting one. Uh, I would say from a staffing issue, I, I think is usually the hardest, finding good staff. Okay. You know, we have a great team, but there's always, you know, we're always in the search for more. And, and I think from the business perspective, I've kind of got down the relationships. Obviously, you're sitting here, you've known me for a long time. I keep strong relationships with my clients. Uh, so the business is there. And from a business perspective, being a business owner, I think staffing is one of our, our largest issues to, to constantly battle. And we want to make sure the staff are happy. We want to make sure we're finding great talent, talent that are going to deliver above your expectations, I, mm -hmm. I think is one of the most important things. Uh, so, you know, that to me, I, I think is probably our largest hurdle is just to make sure we're constantly filling our pipeline with good talent. That's awesome. Um, you say, you say, and I say it all the time, you're talking too much about relationships and I say it all the time. I'm in the real estate business, but I feel that I'm in the relationship business. Either we're selling cars, we're selling homes, we're selling title, we're selling everything we are. We are in the relationship business. If you take care of the people around you, people are going to keep coming back and people prefer you over other people because Absolutely. of the relationship that we built. So that was, that was amazing. That's Kevin, the key to any business is a relationship. Yeah. You don't have relationships. You're just a number. Yeah. So you can do all of the social media marketing you want and bring in that client the first time, but they will not come back again exactly. because there's no relationship, there's no follow-up, and there's no experience. You need to make sure it's an experience. No matter what business the people that are watching this video are in, it, it has to be about the experience. If you don't leave with having a good experience, you're not going to want to come back. Awesome, awesome. Uh, you have two beautiful kids. You have a beautiful wife. What's the one set of principles that when you're gone, you would like to leave them with? Just one set of principles, the most important one for you. That's a good question. Uh, I'm probably, you know, you know, the story between our building that we're in was, uh, we dedicated it to my, my mother-in-law and father-in-law who passed away suddenly. And, and I think one of the things that they constantly did well, which is why we dedicated the building, was giving back to others. Okay. And I think that's the number one thing in, in anything. I can have all the money in the world, but if you're not giving back to others, it's pointless. You, you've lived a unpurposeful life. Yes. You know, so, so the bigger purpose in life and, and what my daughter knows right now very well, because she does tons of stuff with charity. I mean, she's won scholarships for charitable work, and, and it's about helping others. Doing something for someone else without expecting anything in return, I, I think is the most important principle that hopefully I leave with them and they understand that because I get it, my wife gets it, mm -hmm. and uh, you know our daughter gets it, and now our son uh, will we'll learn that over time. That's awesome, that's awesome. That's one of the things when, uh, just a little bit of uh, what happened to me when I when I moved in with my, with my at the time, girlfriend, uh, she had a little dog, a little, uh, we, we, his name is Simon, he's still with us, and uh, they moved them to Colombia, so she was like, she was missing the little dog. And uh, she was like, man, I wanna get a dog, I wanna get a dog, how do I get a dog? We went to a shelter, and it was the first time that I experienced a shelter for abandoned dogs. And there was this little dog called Brownie, who I, we fell in love with, that absolutely changed our lives, because who knows what would have happened to this little dog. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I do help a lot with, uh, I, I, I have two entities that I help with, uh, that I help, which is ASPCH, which is for animal cruelty, very close to my heart, and the other one is Animal Aid Unlimited in India. They help also with, they help animals with cruelty and all that, so I feel that what you're telling me about helping others and being there for other people or other human beings or animals, it's important. I know you do something about uh, the, the kids and, and feeding the kids. And that's something very close to your heart. And I follow you when you talk about it in social media. You post a lot of things about this. What's the backstory behind it? What do you, what do, you do about this? Yeah, absolutely. So we do a lot with Kids in Distress, which is here uh, just locally. You know, it's, okay. a, it's a foster care agency. And, and they have some families that live on site. 
And, and many years ago, for the ones that have been following me for years, I was on the board for a soup kitchen down in Fort Lauderdale. And what I found there is, is when the CEO was there and they brought in someone new, we were trying to figure out what direction do we go. And I started coming up with this whole idea of that I enjoy helping the, the families. I enjoy helping the people that are coming in with the kids in the stroller that need a hot meal. And one of the challenges that I saw is, is they're more focused on helping the male adult who doesn't want to help themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and that I have a problem with because I think there's help for everyone. Yeah. And I'm all for helping people. But I want to help someone who either can't help themselves or wants to help themselves as opposed to the person that's just coming in for a hot meal, hot shower, and, and they'll come back every day for the rest of their life. They don't necessarily want to take that step forward. Mm -hmm. So that's why then we took a shift over to Kids in Distress because we realized that we're so blessed with a family and, and you know healthy children that these kids have nowhere to go. Exactly. These kids pop out of their parents in the hospital and get scooped up, taken away, and they go from foster care to foster care to agency to maybe an abusive place. They grow up in, in drug infested houses and and you know one of the things that we noticed is that here's an organization that is all about helping. They're all about you know creating a future for these children to make sure that they don't become that person that doesn't want to help themselves. Make sure they don't become that criminal or, or drug addiction. Make sure that they have a, a home that they can go to. So, you know, we do a lot with kids in distress. We've taken 80 children to the Miami Sea Aquarium. That's awesome. Uh, you know, we, we buy presents. You know, I always tell the story, my wife's, she, she's a little nuts sometimes. Uh, they asked about adopting families for, for Christmas. And the first year, I think we took two or three. Oh. And the second year, I think we took 26. Oh. So my whole garage was set up with tables and gifts. And, and she didn't just buy them one gift. She bought them pretty much every gift that they asked for. Wow. So no matter what they asked for, 26 kids, they got custom pillowcases because she wanted to make sure at night when they lay down in their bed, they have something that's theirs. That's and, awesome. and that's one of the things that, that we enjoy doing is about making a difference in the children in our community because that's our future. You know, you and I, at some point, we're going to not be doing this business anymore. Yeah. We need to make sure we train the future to do business the same way because with social media and cell phones and all of this stuff, we need to make sure they're on the right track, not the wrong track. Yeah, exactly. Now, changing subject a little bit, and this is going to be the last question. I like to keep it short and sweet. What's the one book that you would recommend me the most? Besides title insurance tips of and course. secrets. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, an author wouldn't, wouldn't be an author without promoting their own book. Uh, but aside from our books, I, I would say The Go-Giver. The Go-Giver is a book that changed my life. Wow. Uh, I'm not the biggest reader. I'll listen to audio books, but I was never the biggest reader. I'm a, I'm a doer. So I like to get out and create the story, not read the story. And that's just my own personal preference. But I remember years ago, someone asked me to read the book because she wanted to meet the author. And the author, his name is Bob Berg, B-U-R-G. He lives just up in Jupiter. And she's like, uh, I'd love to meet this guy. He's, he's one of my heroes. I follow him. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make that happen because this was someone that helped me in my business years ago. So I That's called awesome. Bob and I said, would you mind having a meeting? And we went up and then I became one of his students in his coaching program. Wow. And we talked about how to create endless referrals, how to create a referral based business as opposed to constantly looking for the next deal, which goes back to what we said before that relationships are key. Yes. Uh, so he has five principles in the book. They're called the five laws of stratospheric success. And, and it's changed my life. That but one single handed, that little red book, it's a short read, changed my life to this day, to the business that we've built. That's awesome, man, that's awesome. Uh, like I said, I like to keep it short and sweet. Kevin, how can our viewers, our, our, our people connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can Google the company behind you, Independence Title. Our website is titlerate.com. If you try and Google that, you may find a company in Texas, that's not us. Uh, but if you just go to titlerate.com, that's the best way to get a hold of us. All of our contact information, our email addresses, all of our social media sites. And most importantly, what I like to tell people, you do a great job with YouTube, by the way, is we have our YouTube channel. So subscribe awesome. to the YouTube channel. It's videos just like this. And uh, it's all about education. It's about making a difference in others and, and teaching people to do business the right way. So that's the best way to get a hold of that's us. That's awesome, man. Kevin, thank you so much for oh, your time, pleasure. man. It was awesome. I know it was in. long overdue. But uh, thank you guys very much. Thank you guys for watching. Absolutely. And let us know if you guys have any questions. 
And uh, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Take care.